Hello. Ooh, I remember to do my watch this time. This video is about what I think about Zachariah Sitchin. Zachariah Sitchin is one of the, uh, how do you say, gurus of the alien movement. <laughs> um, he's this very old, um, I think he's a uh, Lebanese man who can speak like a bunch of languages. He knows, um, he can speak a Sumerian tablet language. And uh, he deciphered these Sumerian tablets. Um, these Sumerian tablets were found about 150 years ago um, under sand um, in Iraq. And uh, there's like 70,000 of them, just tons of them they found, um, not in one uh, location, in lots of locations Ur, um, Babylon, um, places like this. And uh, they have stories, very long stories. They have the Epic of Gilgamesh, which I think is the Noah's Ark epic, um, only in another language. Um, they have um, lots of different stories, uh, and they and they and they also have them accompanied with uh, with drawings on the tablets. And uh, one of the stories that Zachary Sitchin translated and uh, I don't know if, it, and if and other people who uh, spoke his spoke that language uh, translate also and agree with him but he translated these and the story is pretty amazing it's the story of um, aliens coming down to the earth um, from another planet um, called the um, Nephilim and uh, they uh, came from a planet called Ma uh, Marduk um, that revolves around our sun every 3,000 years and it has a very highly elliptical orbit so when it's out in space we cannot see it it's called Planet X and the uh, story on the tablets is that it comes by a bunch of times bunch of times, bunch of times and one of the times that con Dungan comes by is it hit this other planet called Tiamat which is, and Marduk is very big it's like uh I mean, huge, I guess, like as big as Jupiter, or almost as big as Jupiter, or something like that, or maybe something like that, or maybe just four times bigger than Earth, I can't remember exactly, but, you know, the tablets are very uh, um, precise, but anyway, uh, Tiamat was also much bigger than the Earth, and it smashed into Tiamat, because it has this elliptical orbit, it comes into our plane, and most of the planets, except for Pluto, are all on the same plane, so if you're going to have one planet traveling in and out, of the planets on the same plane like all the others then you're gonna eventually have a collision and so this guy collided into Tiamat and then Tiamat turned into a um, into the asteroid belt which is between Mars and uh, Jupiter Mars I think we're the fourth rock out first you have uh, Mercury and then Venus and then um, or are we the third Mercury and then Venus and then us and then one more is Mars, and then between Mars and, and Jupiter um, is this asteroid belt. And if you were to look at the um, what's it called valencies, the, uh, the 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 size of the orbits, um, the space between um, Mars and then the asteroid belt and then uh, Jupiter is 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 consistent with the spaces of all the others. So common sense says that yes, there was a planet there, and it just got smashed up, and now it's an asteroid belt. Um, and the funny thing is, is that these uh, it's written in these tablets, and they knew about this before we even found that asteroid belt. So fancy that, isn't that amazing? Um, pretty much tells you that these people knew what they're talking about, and how, and and so they say that these Nephilim came down, and you can see drawings of the Nephilim. Um, and they're much larger in size. They're much taller than uh, than humans. So I guess the attitude is that they're bigger than us. Um, and uh, and lots of most of the, in these Sumerian tablets, the stories of all the gods. They have stories of the gods. And the gods did this, and the gods did that. There's one Enlil and Enki are these two brothers, and they had a fight with each other and over like what to do with the humans because they controlled us and. Um, and uh, like 300,000 years ago, according to the tablets, they came down to mine gold because their uh, their um, 
their planet needed to uh, have a self-imposed greenhouse effect on it because they went so far out into space that it would lose all of its heat and they needed gold to put up in their atmosphere to retain that heat and uh, earth had lots of gold so they went to South Africa and mined gold and we actually do know and this is another thing that backs it up we actually have found a 200 uh, I think 300,000 year old gigantic gold mines and we don't even know where they came from in South Africa supposedly I haven't seen the cellulite photos of them but um, um, the story is that they didn't have workers their workers had a rebellion uh, the story is that they're pretty primitive spacefarers they couldn't fly here all the way from their planet when they're way out they'd have to wait in their, until their planet was close to us before they'd fly over here and then so they flew over here and uh, they had a worker rebellion so then they had to uh, have a new kind of worker um, and the monkey man they had at the time I think it was Homo erectus was too stupid to do the particular kind of work that they wanted to do so they had to make a uh, half them half monkey man and that was us or that was our ancestor uh, maybe the uh, Neanderthal it was the missing link uh, if, if you look uh, at the uh, progression of human um, evolution uh, you'd have like homo this, homo that, homo erectus and then all of a sudden you go from homo erectus to neanderthal and neanderthal is much more advanced than so homo erectus actually neanderthal has larger brains than we do and uh, so like that's actually a big mystery that we have now like how that happened so quickly why are there no fossils and bones in between and uh, so that's another that's a third thing that actually backs up with these Sumerian tablets say but, um, and so that's where we came from. Now, if they did that, and, and he said that, so that basically we're, we're products of them. And if these people are very, um, uh, kind of controlled us and we're made it to be like, uh, slaves, then maybe, uh, you know, we're not quite as, um, powerful and healthy and smart as we should be. And so that kind of goes in line, in line with Barbara, Barbara Marciniak says about how we, we had fear genetically, uh, programmed into our uh, DNA so um, anyway uh, that's what Zachary Sitchin says according to the Sumerian tablets what do I believe um, yeah I definitely believe that I don't know uh, how much of that I do believe though um, I could talk about that maybe some other time but uh, basically um, they set into motion all of our um oh, oh and, and also supposedly they had these little automaton robot people and they even have uh, little figurines of them and they look like gray aliens so maybe there's a certain part certain uh hybrid re relation to gray aliens that they were using to do stuff or maybe they just look like it and they made these little robot people but uh you can see little figurines of those um and actually edgar casey talks about them he called them things but um, apparently they didn't have souls, so maybe they were robots, you know. And, and we're we're pretty much coming into the point now where we're going to be able to make robots. I think Japanese can make robots that can walk up and down stairs. But uh, anyways, uh, we uh, there's a whole legacy of our uh, civilization that actually sprung from that and is still here today. Uh, the number six, uh, how we have 60 minutes in an hour, seconds in a minute. And this all came from Samaria originally. Um, 360 degrees to the circle. This came from Samaria. Um, I think even uh, seven days in a week came from way back then. So as far back as we can record, all of these uh, these uh, 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 social uh, ways about um, dividing up our time and stuff came started from them. And it was just passed on from them to the Egyptians, the Egyptians to the Jews, Jews to the Romans, Romans, uh, yada, 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 it goes on and on and on. So uh, it's pretty amazing how, uh, how uh, stuff, legacies like that can just continue on and go forward and, uh, and maintain, um, you know, like a word that somebody coins could be a word. 50,000 years in the future and still be there and nobody knows why but anyways I'm out of time that's what I think about Zechariah Sitchin as far as if that thing's going to come back I don't know whatever I don't really I don't know some people claim that they found it anyways out of time